wouldn't it be smarter for co-ops if they're focused on a rural environment to be supporting um, in a, a, a situation where they're not required to um, have these very long runs of transmission and distribution to support people way, way out at the end of a line? Wouldn't it be smarter to just simply island those people with a solar and energy storage system and serve it and, and they would be considered serviced in that way? The, the biggest problem with that is if you were designing a system, if it was the 30s and you were designing a system, you'd want to do that. Of course, that technology didn't exist then. Right. The problem with all of this stuff is paying for the infrastructure that's already been deployed. Mm. Is so it, if you is come up with a better use, for? no. If it were okay. already paid for, then the fixed cost component of your bill would be zero. Yeah, There's so some of the transmission mm -hmm. assets that are completely reduced to zero. Uh, th th and that's one of the big problems that, that we'll get to later. Uh, okay, then, okay. then one other important difference is the difference in electricity and natural gas. Mm. Uh, typically, the electric, what you're regulating with natural gas is the distribution network, the pipes. Yep. And they call it transmission. And their distribution uh, level is divided by what they call the city gate. In the electric system, that's the substation. In the natural gas system, it's the city gate where you have distribution and you have transmission, which in gas is just larger pipes. But the gas itself is a commodity and it's not regulated. So your bill has two components, your regulated part, which is the, the cost of the fixed cost of the distribution system, and then the fuel part, uh, which is the cost of the natural gas itself. And okay, the gas so the, prices do mm -hmm. what they do when they spike from two dollars to eight dollars. Your bill skyrockets. Uh, the the other part of your bill it go probably goes up a little bit, uh, but you don't even notice that because you're getting hammered uh, when the commodity price quadruples, like it's done in the last two years or so. On natural gas. Yes. I see. So, so they the people that are transporting the natural gas are regulated, but the cost of the material in the pipe is not regulated, and it floats towards a global marketplace. And that's why when you have disruptions in the Ukraine, and natural gas goes through the roof, or for any reason, I mean, there's a thousand reasons yes. why this goes up. Then it it's a pass through directly to the energy consumer. Yes. Now, there's some regulation around the pass-through, and in some places, you pick your own pass-through entity, and others, you have a monopoly pass-through entity. Then they have what's called a, a basically a gas procurement plan, mm -hmm. and that's just to make sure uh, there's no silver bullet on commodity prices, but given that industrial customers uh, are large, what you don't want the gas company to do is to systematically favor them, the competitive co uh, customers with their lower cost supply and then dump the higher cost supply uh, on everybody else. So there's some regulation to stop that from happening, but the price itself is set in the market. It's not regulated. Now, the, the other thing about gas is there's a lot fewer uh, innovations that change the interaction between the customer and the gas company. Uh, most of the innovations are what you put in the end of the pipe, like renewable natural gas, perhaps. But at the other end of the, you, there, there isn't anything like solar and storage. Uh, there, uh, there, those technologies just don't exist. So a lot of these interconnection problems uh, don't happen so much on the gas side as they do the electric side. Uh, but when people are thinking about all this stuff, it's good to see those two worlds uh, collide because about 30% of our electricity is is generated by burning natural gas. So when mm -hmm. the gas goes crazy, you not only see it in your gas bill, you also see it in your electric bill. Uh, so that that's why it's important. And it's also often used as a comparison that you, it, go, it, it will go almost anywhere. Our wind is uh, is geographically limited the best wind is in the high plains um not all of it but a lot of it uh, so gas is very flexible so that's all often used as a comparison when utilities are doing resource planning uh, they're supposed to lay out comparisons so the comparison is often a natural gas unit so understanding how the gas market works uh, is always important 
Now, the next you, two on your list. Well, now, hang, hang on. I, yes. I want to just unpack that a little bit. So you're saying that the innovation around gas as a as a product for energy or heat or work, there's not a lot of innovation there is what you're suggesting. The only way to avoid those emissions or avoid those price volatilities is to stop using the gas and start using the electricity that you potentially can generate yourself through solar electricity or micro wind or some other source. Is that well, accurate? That or renewable natural gas. Renewable natural gas is not yet scaled. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with the utility business is there's lots of really cool things that, that you can do, but if it doesn't scale, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter because the scale is so large it's just an asterisk. It might be a good thing, but in a big picture, it's just an asterisk. Yeah, it's noise. Uh, so the there system. is some stuff happening with renewable natural gas. Uh, you can draw it off of landfills. If you sort like you do with recycling uh, your various products, uh, you, you can put it on a fast track. But still, the, the amount of renewable natural gas that's actually in the pipe are one or two percent. It's not as far along as, as the other technologies. And and when the when the light bulb goes off and you have a new technology, there's often a significant delay uh, between that technology and it actually becoming available. And whenever you start out, they're always really expensive and they have bugs you work out of. And then you work the bugs out. And if the economics get right, then you have what's called the S curve, which is this massive adoption. So following all these technologies and trying to think of that S curve and figure out where they're at on the S curve is always something that you want to do. And the renewable natural gas is is toward the back of the pack. It's not where well, it's probably in roughly the same place as where hydrogen is. There's some potential there, but there's a lot of challenges there too.